So this morning, um, if I had to have a title, the title would be Unshakable Faith. Amen. Um, the scripture um, that I will be coming from is Exodus 19, starting at verse 9. I started with this scripture because I wanted to set the tone. Okay. So um, has everybody had a chance to get there? If there's anybody that hasn't. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. When we look at this scripture, the Lord is saying, just in case they don't have faith, just in case they don't have that unshakable faith. If you think about it, before this even took place, the Lord had set them free from being slaves. He had brought them through the Red Sea. He had done all these things, but he still said, just in case they don't have faith. So let's look at the next verse. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes right here the Lord is letting us know that we have to be prepared to be able to use certain tools that he makes available to us to walk in unshakable faith. Fasting, consecrating ourselves is a necessity to build the foundation to walk in unshakable faith. He said, and be ready by the third day, because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that they do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death. They are to be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. No person or animal shall be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they approach the mountain. The Lord is letting them know right here. He's saying, don't send that nosy person. Don't send that person who thinks that they can jump before my plan. Because if, or that person that walks in their flesh, because they got to be walking in their flesh if they're trying to see, if they're trying to be, jump ahead of God. And he said, he's letting them know right there. He said, do it if you dare, because you won't live to tell about it. So come on and let them do, be out of obedience to what I said. Because see, we didn't have, they didn't have Jesus like we do. If you didn't do what you was told, he said, take them out, period. And he meant that. So there the Lord wanted the people to have complete and total unshakable faith in him and who he appointed, him and Moses. He wanted them, the people, not to trust in the person that's going around trying to see or jump ahead of him but trust in him. That way, they're walking in obedience with God. So after, in verse 14, it says, after Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them, and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves. For the third day, abstain from sexual relations. On, that, on the morning of the third day, there was a thunder and a lightning and a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast and everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp 
to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now imagine God wanted them to have that unshakable faith so much that he said, I'm coming down. I'm going to come down. I'm going to be there. And Moses, as you talk, I'm going to talk. Imagine just being there in that standing. How after he's already bought you and set you free, he's already bought you to the place where you are today. But yet he said, I want you to have that unshakable faith. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to help them because I know about their moaning and their groaning. So I'm going to help them. So verse 18 says, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. And the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and the voice of the God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of the Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top. So Moses went up. The Lord said to him, go down and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord and many of them shall perish. Now imagine, he's already been down. He's come down. He's spoken. He said what he gave them the laws is what he did. He gave them the Ten Commandments when he came down in that cloud. But he still knew, he said it right here. He said, let them know don't push their way through that mountain because many of them will perish. He knew even after he did that, their faith still was not in the place where it should be. How many of us today can look at our faith and say that it's that unshakable faith, that no matter what the enemy does to us, he can't shake us, he can't move us. That unchangeable, as the praise team sang, that unchangeable. Yeah. How many of us can we say that today? Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them, again, warning them, that there was a way he wanted them to come. He did not care if they were priests or who they were. There was a certain way that the Lord required them to come. So even today, there is a certain way that God requires us to come. We cannot just come into his presence any old type of way. He requires that still today. See, because he warned them it was to be, complete, to be completed in the way that he required. You see, if, if we know God and his character and the way that he wants things to be completed, this helps us to build unshakable faith if you don't know God or you only know some things about God how can you have faith in something that you don't know about faith in someone that you don't know we have to know God's character who he is what he likes about us do you know what God loves about you do you think know the things that he don't like about you because I he shows me every day things that he don't like about me. And, I, and, and some of that pruning hurts a little bit. But I'm grateful and I'm thankful like, ooh, yeah, you is ugly there, girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say about me. I can't say about anybody else, but I know about me and what he's showing me about me, which helps me to get closer to him because I'm learning more about his character and who he is. Amen. When he shines that light in them dark places, I'm like, oh, wow. Jesus. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. Because I, um, I inherited some things, I'll say. I inherited some things from my parents, from, you know, I 
some things that God has had to break off of me and trim and smooth the rough edges. Because I have some rough edges, and there's still some rough edges. I'm a very blunt person. I, 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 I'm learning how to trim that down because everybody can accept things bluntly. You have, you have to soften some stuff for some people. That's just the way it is. Their character is different than yours. I come from a place where tell me, you know, because I'm going to tell you. But everybody's not like that. So that hurts. That hurts others. You know, and that's not of God's character. And he had to show me that. That's not of him. But to trim it, but yet still be bold with his word. Don't trim it down so low that you're not showing that you're a warrior for him. But stand for God, but do it. Some people need it gentler than others. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is. He's working on my face. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I, let's keep it real. Anybody that knows me, my face, I'll be looking like, what? And I don't even know that I'm looking at you like that. I really don't because I'm thinking something in my head and my face says, hmm, hmm. You know, it does all of that. It does all of that. And I don't know that it's doing that. And somebody's walking away with their feelings hurt, and I don't even know I didn't hurt their feelings. So God is working on that. He's, he's working out the rough patches in my life. And I don't know about, I know it ain't just me in here that he's working out the rough patches. It ain't just me. Amen. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, so back to, that was not, uh, that was God, okay? <laughs> So, um, we do things sometimes out of our flesh. And when we do these things out of our flesh, it opens a door. Um, it opens a door to fear. It opens a door to unbelief. It opens a door to worry and anxiety. And it lets Satan in when God never intended for him to be in whatever situation that you have in your life that it causes you to walk in un. Shake up a face. But sometimes we just don't have the patience to wait on him. Or we think we know better than him. We want to take off and say, no, I got to take care of this instead of having the patience to wait on God. And sometimes, you know, we let, we, we say, Lord, I got this. I got this. And when it doesn't work out that way, the way that we expected it, it gives us a lack of vision and it will destroy our motivation and also destroy your faith. Yeah. And we're the culprit. Mm. It ain't God. It's us because we went either before him or we acted out of our own self, our own flesh, instead of waiting on the guidance, the word said this, God shall light our feet. He is a lamp unto our feet. So he, we tend to not wait for him to light the lantern to go down the path. So we're moving in the dark. Instead of waiting on him to light the way. In most cases, when this continues to happen, it leaves us just faithless. We're just walking around with a mask on, like I got all the faith. But inside, you're hurting. And I don't know about anybody else, but I've walked around it many a time where I was hurting, but I smiled. Hallelujah. Knowing inside, I'm going through the most. But I don't want anybody else to see. I can't show them. can't show them what I got going on. This happens every day. God wants us to not refuse to be humble and examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. It's so important for self-examination because you're going to see some stuff that other people are not going to see because only you know what you're thinking in your head during different trials and different situations. 
Maybe your partner may know, and then sometimes you don't even tell your partner half of what you're really feeling or half of what you're really thinking. But God knows. Amen. So now, if we jump over to verse 32, still in Exodus, but jumping over to 32. Everybody there? Amen. The people saw that Moses was, the people saw that Moses was when so long coming down from the mountain. They gathered around Aaron and said, come, make us gods who will, who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, he brought us up out of Egypt. We don't know what happened to him. Now Aaron answered them, take off the gold earrings that your wives and your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they had handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who bought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there'll be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards, he sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in rivalry. Now, when we look at this, God just came down from the mountain he just came down from the mountain. Physically came down in the cloud for the people. Bought them through the Red Sea. Set them free. But yet, they said, Moses is taking too long. He's taking too long. Uh, we ain't going to be waiting on him. Uh, let's build this God to praise. Aaron was like, hmm. I believe in my Holy Ghost imagination. He was like, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, I'm in trouble. So I'm going to build an altar in front of the idol. So now we got two things going on here. We got the worship of God, but we got the idol, the worship of the idol in the back. We got two things going on here. Because Aaron knows he's in big trouble. How many times have we done something or built something our little let our job or whatever our little idol is, how many times or have we let the pressure of others cause us to do something that is out of the will of God? And then know we in big trouble, big trouble. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't done it on many occasions. <laughs> I had to look back and be like, oh, Lord, okay, I done messed up. I done messed up. So Aaron, he caught himself trying to fix it. We're going to worship God tomorrow. Now, we've been worshiping this calf all this time. Now we're going to come back around. We're going to worship God and have the festival. Makes no sense. But he was trying to do anything because he was thirsty because he knew he was in trouble. Now, when we look at this, Aaron I believe that how all this got started in my Holy Ghost imagination, it probably got started by one person. I was like, you know what? That Moses is taking too long. Probably may have been talking to her husband. I don't know. Could have been talking anywhere. But began to plant those seeds. Plant those seeds of unbelief. Plant those seeds of, oh, he's taking too long. He done left us out here. What are we going to do? We got to have somebody lead us. What are we going to do? How many times has somebody else come and drop a seed for you that started you not to believe in what God had already told you? But they dropped that seed, and the seed went all the way through the camp. All the way through the camp. Now they done rose up against Aaron. Aaron, he's nervous, so he's like, okay. Because Aaron... He's wanting to be the people pleaser. 
How many people want to be the people pleaser? The one that don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I used to be that one, but I learned. I'll hurt you before I let God whoop me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm, I'm not going to take a whooping for you. It's not going to go like that. That happens in our life when we try to please others. We cannot please others. God is always supposed to be first. It doesn't, I, I'm sorry about your feelings. I'm sorry about the way you feel, but I'm going to follow God. Because them whoopings ain't no joke. I don't know about y'all, but them whoopings ain't no joke when God begins to whoop you. It ain't nothing like when your mama and daddy used to whoop you. It's worse than that. So, the thing is that I have learned that you have to have unshakable faith that says, God, I trust you. God, I belong to you. If you clothe the flowers and the trees, what much more will you do for me? Lord God, I believe in your word. I know that you are with me. You are my ever-present help in times of trouble. All battles are not mine. If it's mine, I will fight in the spirit. I will no longer fight in my flesh, oh God. For God, I know that we have to have faith that break chains to set us free. Free. Free in you, God. We can't walk in fear. Aaron was walking in fear. And fear is an issue. I don't know about anybody else, but I get fear every time she calls me and says, uh, um, you wanna, do you want to um, give the word on so-so? I'd be like, oh. <laughs> a feeling gets in my belly. I ain't going to lie. I get a feeling in my belly like, why does she do this? Why does she do this? And she knows I'm not going to tell her no. I might tell somebody else no, but I'm not going to tell her no. <laughs> fear. It's a big chain. Fear, when fear rises up, we do so many things that are unlike God out of fear, and we don't even know that we're doing it. We don't even know we're doing it because we're afraid. Fear that the bill's not going to get paid. So I don't know, I might have to go do this and do that. Oh, I might take that from my ties, and I might take that from here because I'm in fear. I'm in fear, God, that you're not watching over my children, so I got to watch over them for you. I know that I'm their protector. I know that I'm, I got to do this and I got to do that. Not remembering that they belong to God. They don't belong to you. Yeah. They don't belong to you. Yeah. Understanding that his word says that he is our protector. That's right. He will protect us from anything. Anything. Does not matter. Does not matter. But sometimes it's hard to do that. Life makes it hard to believe. If you're not in your word, if you don't study your Bible, if you don't come to Bible study, how are you going to know when the battle comes how to fight in the spirit? You ain't got no tools to fight with. So you're going to a gunfight with a knife. You have no tools to fight. We have to, we, we, I know I need all my stuff. The way, the way my life's set up, I need all the tools to fight with. Us, every weapon, knives, guns, bats, I need it all. I need it all. All of it. I need it all to fight. Yes, you need it all. You need it all. And you can't get it by sitting at home, watching Netflix, watching TV, and missing Bible study and getting the food that you need to be able to stand and fight. Like Mark said, you got to stand 10 toes down. Well, you sure can't stand. Your toes is going to crumple from under you if you ain't got the tools. You ain't got the food. You ain't had the nutrients all week. So when the attack comes, you're weak. Right. You're weak. Your body ain't ready for the fight. 
But when you've been at Bible study and you've been getting at church and you've been getting fed, you'll be like, devil, come on. Okay, but I got this. You might have knocked me down, but I'm up again. What? 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 Devil, I got you. I got you. I ain't scared of you. I'm not scared of you. That man chased me around that car, and the only reason I ran is because he was older than me. It wasn't because I was scared of that demon. Right. Wasn't because I was scared. We found out that man was 82 years old. Jesus. Now, y'all, if I'd hit the man with the bat, <laughs> at 82 years old, the man would have been dead. I would have been in an orange jumpsuit telling my pastor, come save me. Because they ain't just letting me go because I am who I am. And I'm going to have to prove who, that I didn't mean to kill that man. I ain't got time for that. I done told y'all before I ain't jail material. That ain't my thing. Wasn't meant for jail. That ain't my style. But if I'd have hit that man, I'm going to jail. I would have been in jail, crying. The thing is, he didn't take me out, baby. He didn't take my baby out, baby. My baby said, Mama, I don't want to go to hell. She said, Mama, I prayed, and I've been delivered. She prayed on her own. She prayed on her own for her own deliverance. Huh? God said, I am your protector. I will protect you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am evangelist, like shall brown, full with the Holy Ghost, filled with fire. My God is able. He's able. He's my protector. He protected me. He didn't forget about me. He gave me the mind to know. He guided me through that thing. That's how much he loves me. That's how much he loves her. He knew she was thinking about going down the wrong path. Sometimes God got to let things happen to change their mind. Change their mind. Bring them back from the pits of hell where the devil's trying to send them. God knows what he's doing. And I had to let my hands go. Let it go. Because he got it. He got that. She don't belong to me. She belongs to him. I just need y'all to know God loves you. He loves you. Unshakable faith makes, brings the love of God. Brings the love of God. And he'll never let you go. And the devil tried to make me believe something was wrong with me. Afterwards, I cried. I was like, God, what did I do? He said, you didn't do nothing, daughter. It's who you are. I need for you to learn that even when your flesh rises up, push it down. Listen for my voice. Because I got you. I got you. He loves us. He loves us no matter what. So there's a few things that I just want you to take away from this. And you can write them down if you would like. By faith, declare God's blessings. Amen. Blessings are now your portion yeah. because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. Your portion now includes healing, provision, yeah. and peace. Yeah. By faith, reject discouragement yes. and fear. Ask God to help you walk in unshakable faith Amen. and to help you overcome anything that is holding you back. Amen. Satan still wants to inflict the curse. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's, it. That's what he does. And enter into God's blessings. We need to learn how to stand against the enemy in unshakable faith. There's always going to be a battle. But we have to have the mentality and expect to win. Expect the victory. By unshakable faith, set your eyes on your goal. 
Set your eyes on the goal and see your path clearly. Listen to God's voice. So you're, so in your obedience and moving, so you're in obedience and moving exactly as he desires. Preparing exactly the way he requires and move forward. There will be times in your life when we will be directed down a path and we may, that path may not be familiar. But sometimes God requires us to walk down it anyway. So we ask that God wants you to walk in it and wait on him. Each step, wait on him. There will be a moment of crossing over into your covenant identity. Yes. Those, that's going to happen yes, in our lives. If you sanctify yourself today, then you are assured to enter into victory tomorrow. Amen. You must watch the presence of God closely. Because in his presence, as he moves, you move. Like the song says, when you move, I move, just like that. You know? God has put the right leaders in place to help you enter into what you have been called to walk in, in your life. So know your leaders. The word spoken today will manifest tomorrow. And that's Exodus 8 and 10, if you need to look at that. The tests you are experiencing today become your testimony tomorrow, Psalm 66. If you refuse to submit and humble yourself today, then you will be bought lower tomorrow, Exodus 9 and 10. If you ready yourself today, then you can move forward tomorrow. Exodus 19 and 15. If you deal with your fear today, then he will overtake your enemies tomorrow. Joshua 11 and 6. If you seek God today through fasting and worship, then he will send you forth to overcome your blockades tomorrow. Judges 20. When you disobey today, you risk losing you're all tomorrow. If you lose your stand today, you'll be running tomorrow. Hear the word of the prophet and gain your strategy for victory. God will battle tomorrow and you will prosper. Second Chronicles 20. Gain favor with the king today and the enemies will be yours tomorrow. Esther 5. And when you have an opportunity today to give and serve, give and serve the Lord. Proverbs 3 and 28. Don't worry today. He knows tomorrow. Matthew 6 and 30, James 4, 13 and 14. So my last thing today, I just want everybody to know unshakable faith. Through tests, through trials, through everything that you go through in your life, unshakable shakeable faith will see you through it every time no matter what it is because we're going I'm, I'm learning we're going to keep going it ain't going to stop as long as you keep worshiping and praising him and doing his job the enemy is going to continue to bring the pressure and the only way to make that through is unshakable faith Amen. so I'm going to pray out I'm going to give the benediction um, Father our God we thank you Lord we thank you that we shall have unshakable faith, God. We thank you that we can always lean on you, God. Lord God, we thank you that you see us through every situation, that you walk with us through every trial and situation in our lives. Father God, help us to look more like you. Help us to have the character and know your character, God. Father God, we love you so much. We worship you, God, for who you are in our lives. God, we just ask that you continue to hold on to, we continue to hold on to your unchanging hand, God, knowing that you're the one that's unstoppable, that you can break down any wall, that you can make it through any trial that comes before us, God. God, we thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.